hey everybody last outrider here with a special request video to all the people who want to know the specifics of what my army list is this is it uh it's uh three three full battle sister squads and a celestine assault squad is what i call it uh, i'm not i'm going to tell you all of my secrets all of my tricks and i welcome everybody to copy it please do this army really is not that expensive as i said in my other video i just pick up battle sisters everywhere i can ebay lying around trade whatever you do i, I used to trade Yu-Gi-Oh cards for it and stuff like that um it, it's really really pretty easy i don't have any emulators i don't have any repression tanks i i have now i have what i call my fortress of retribution instead of redemption because i i like that idea better retribution for anybody who attacks me specifically um and here it is uh the battle sister squad consists of 20 sisters one upgraded to a veteran sister superior okay i take the flamer one flamer and everything else i take as melters um yeah that that's it for the basic squad on top of that i add a priestess now i call it a priestess because i came up with the idea of why don't i just take another sister of battle i had i ended up getting a lot of um sisters with the banner pole you know you you find those a lot a lot of people don't don't care too much about them and i said these are going to be my priestesses it's obviously a different figure uh nobody has any problem identifying it except for one particular quarrelsome dude who i faced an organized play one time decided to say that he was confused probably the same type of player who's confused whether a tyrannocyte is a vehicle or a monstrous creature uh because he said that uh it has to be WYSIWYG and the, uh, she doesn't have power armor as a priestess so you know what i did Bop. i broke off the backpack right then and there said there now it's flak armor or carapace armor whatever you want to call it it's no longer power armor no backpack it looks different are you happy now uh so yeah that's that's how they're priestesses <laughs> um I also do that because sometimes I take banners as an upgrade and you can put the banner on the pole, but it's nice. Now, with the priestess comes the ecclesiarchal battle conclave. Now, this is a retinue attached to the priestess. This is important when I talk about my Celestine squad later. Um, for a 30 points, and it comes with three arcoflagellants, but I upgrade those to death cult assassins. So every squad is going to now be 20 battle sisters, a priestess, and three death cult assassins. That's a total of 24 models. For the death cult assassins, use whatever you want. I mean, you can use the standard ones there. Many times I use the old metal witch figures, the old metal uh, Dark Eldar witches because nobody really has them as many now and they they, they they look like death cult assassins and uh especially they definitely look like females and i uh, i wanted to keep the all-female army but you can use whatever you want sometimes i even use the um the old old warriors the old dark eldar warriors for them now <clears throat> next is the celestine assault squad which consists of a full squad of Celestine. That's 10 Celestines upgraded, one veteran superior, a priestess, a Celestine superior, uh, which again comes with the assaults, uh, the, the death cult assassins. But this time they're upgraded even more because you can take up to 10 models in the priestess's retinue. So guess what I do? I add 10 death cult assassins now and the rhino now you're like oh whoa wait how can you do the rhino you got you got you got 20 20 models there it's it's not possible they can't fit in yes they can and i'll tell you how because the retinue is attached to the priestess and the priestess is an independent carrier 
uh, character. So I just detach her. And that means those 10 death cult assassins go with her. So in a pinch, I can turn this into two completely different 10 model squads, which is very nice, especially if you want to do flanking or wrap around or you want to do two separate charges. Yeah, this is great. They think it's one unit moving up and then suddenly, plip, aha, 10 Celestines go charging this unit. 10 death cult assassins and a priestess charges that unit. It's very nice. Very sneaky tactic for some people. Uh, uh, it's, it's, tactics is what the game is all about. Now, if you want to know, some people don't know what the, um, what the stats are on the death cult assassin and why I like her so much is... Wow, I think it's uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to look it up here in the codex, but I know that they are they're they're, they're weapon skill four, uh, ballistic skill three, toughness three, strength uh, five or four no strength four it's the arcoflagellants which are strength five. Uh, uh, the, the run the part I really like is uh, initiative six. Okay, and they come with two power weapons and have two attacks, leadership eight. They come with flak armor, so that's a, a, a armor roll of five, but it doesn't matter because they have uncanny reflexes, which gives them a five plus invulnerable save. Can you imagine that as a unit? Ten of them running at you with the priestess who does the war hymns, which then allows them to re-roll their saves or to re-roll their hits. It's even better when you put them all as one 20 model squad with the Celestines who pops their act of faith, okay? And that gives them furious charge. Furious charge. 10 death cult assassins with furious charge. Those are the people who jump off of my battlements from uh, uh, from the Fortress of Retribution when the, when I do that. And then I have the other special rule, Repel the Enemy, which allows them to disembark from the battlements and assault in the same turn. Very useful. Very, very useful. But if you have to, if you have to put them in the Rhino and move them to the other side of the table or something like that due to some mission or objective that you need to reach, just detach the Priestess and now it's a 10, 10 model Celestine squad fits into the Rhino and it can move. Just adapt to the circumstances. That's what I'm telling you. Um, there's one important thing I forgot to mention about my fort in my fortress video, and that is I keep my sisters inside. Sometimes, like I said, I keep my Celestine assault squad on top, but my sisters are inside, and there's a reason for that. Because there's another upgrade I failed to mention, and that is ammo store. Ammo store is very good. Ammo store allows you to re-roll all ones to hit in the firing phase for models fired from inside or through firing slots in it. And the whole entire front of the fortress has firing arcs, by the way. It says very specifically in the rules that the annex has firing slots all around the side. And of course the corridor has the firing slots. So that means the entire front, basically about 180 degrees around the fortress of redemption, you can shoot through. Uh, from the inside. And obviously you can shoot from, from on top. So ammo store is, is absolutely fantastic. You re-roll all ones. This works perfectly, perfect synergy with the uh, battle hymns from the priestess, who, which allows you then to roll, re-roll all wounds. Yes, how awesome is that? And then, of course, you can still pop your Axe of Faith, which um, you can pop your Act of Faith, and it has the simulacrum. Trust me, they, they, it's, it's very nice. Try it. Now, the other thing we were going to talk about is the Void Shield. Uh, I got questions on that, and I'm just going to read it to you. The, the, straight from the rulebook now. I got my Planet Side Edition, and it is Void Shield, 25 points. 
The fortification houses an ancient device that can generate a localized void shield. Whilst a building has a void shield, any hits scored by shooting attacks against the building, models embarked within or upon its battlements, will instead hit the void shield. This is very important because many times the few people who actually know about this rule think that it only protects the building. It protects, protects the people on the battlements as well. And I think it's better than the sky shield fortification because it gives you a flat armor value 12 shield. Okay? <laughs> For everybody trying to hit it. So it's great. It's an armor value 12 shield, a glancing or penetrating hit, or any hit from a destroyer weapon scored against the void shield causes it to collapse. After this, further hits the original target instead. Further hits strike the original target instead. At the end of each controlling player's turn, roll a die for the collapsed shield. A roll of five plus instantly restores it. Okay, so even with destructor weapons, which is for you Imperial Knight players, that means the first hit is still going to be absorbed. It's going to be absorbed. Uh, so, so, but this basically removes all small arm fires. So if you've you've got a horde of orcs that are coming up with shooter boys, blah 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 blah, blah, blah nothing, even Tau okay uh they're gonna have to work to punch through this otherwise it's uh, it's uh, you got to get through that first shot you got to get through it it's amazing um and you also have to make sure that the people you know when 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 you got to make sure what shot gets through it gets a little tricky when you're rolling the dice okay because you know, when you roll the dice, people are always going to try to, ha, 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 penetration, this one, this is the one that counts, um, <laughs> so all my rest get through. No! Go in order. They hit, then we see if they penetrate. Weapon by weapon by weapon. Don't, don't just let them roll a mass amount of dice and let the, uh, your opponent choose, aha, one penetrated so all the rest of mine get through. No, you might find that it's like the fourth or fifth or tenth weapon that penetrates. And that means all the rest don't get through. Bounced off the void shield. Now, for the escape hatch, I have to specify why I said I think they're hidden. Well, let's read the description. Okay, if the word escape hatch itself is not clear enough to you that it's hidden, then we have the little set. This fortification maintains a concealed escape route. I mean, there, there, there's a second one. When this building is first occupied, is first occupied. Okay, so now most of the time my fortress is always occupied at the, on the first turn. But, 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 some people might keep fortifications out there that is not occupied on the first turn. You do not need to place your escape hatch until it's occupied. So another tactic, especially if you... Uh, if you have one of the uh, bunkers or things like that that has automatic fire or a magus machine spirit um which raises the auto fire up to a ballistic skill of three you might not you might not occupy it at all uh it's not until you go inside of it that you have to determine an escape hatch this is what i do when i use the bastion sometimes i use a bastion in the game and i leave it unoccupied on my side of the table until turn two, turn three, who knows when. Then I move a unit inside of it. And it's only at that time, on that turn, when I occupy it, that I need to choose where the escape hatch is 
which can be placed anywhere within 12 inches of the building that is not impassable terrain or within another building okay good I haven't I haven't tried to be that cheesy yet uh the escape hatch marker is an additional access point for the building but models using it cannot use the repel the enemy special rule now this is where some people are saying I have to put marker on the table and I'm saying that's just nuts over and over and over again it's an escape hatch does it make any sense to create an escape hatch and have a little neon sign above it you know with a little arrow pointing down this is where I'm escaping from look here look here no I gave you my answer on how to keep it concealed have the guy turn around go out of the room take a picture okay have them come back you have the picture as evidence of where you put the hatch they don't need to know what it is now yes if there is no way for you to do that no picture nobody has a phone nobody has a camera nobody has any other friend or anybody who can point to and say here it is then they can make the argument of saying you have to put the marker on the table where they can see it but that that hasn't happened to me yet <clears throat> okay so what do we go on next the assault yes so the assault down from the battlements is is an important part of this of, of my strategy because that is a debarkation point and you have the repel enemy so you can move and you can shoot and you can assault when you when you get when you come down off of the battlements uh, this is also especially true for the main tower because when I use seraphim I usually have them come up from the main tower high above since they have jump packs uh, they're the only unit that's going to be coming down from there <laughs> you know but they still get the repel the enemy special rule because up there is still a battlement they can jump down off of that make their with their jump packs and still assault afterwards and this is important because uh other than the the command squad um they're the ones with the melta bombs and to clarify for the person who had the question about how i fight the uh imperial knights it's really with the seraphim it's with the seraphim uh if, if if some of the close combat knights come close enough because those are really the only ones i have to worry about or the orcanaut um the ones that stay back like the paladins they're they're not really a threat because uh, they're going to be hit by the icarus las can twin linked las cannon okay and normally I don't have to with twin links I'm re-rolling the hit with the uh battle him I'm re-rolling the penetration or with the crack storm from the missile si and silo annex you know that's hitting it so anybody standing that far away is going to be hit by that focused fired by that if you have exorcist tanks that's even better that's another d6 strength eight hits going on it as well um and with the crack weapon it's uh with the crack storm that's a barrage so you know he needs to keep his shield on the side and if he keeps it on the side then i get to roll a d6 you know four plus if i roll a four plus a four or better uh it hits on the opposite so shield than on the side that he was keeping it on so even for the ion shield even at a distance if you keep it on the side there's a 50 percent chance that i hit the other side and then i roll for penetration so it's really not a problem for the distance for the ones that attack I have the seraphim which can disembark from the top or anything like that I have a full squad of 10 okay and probably put in the canonists if I have one or Saint Celestine if you have one uh, they're all going to have melta bombs so they're going to be able to run up if they get close enough slap 10 melta bombs usually I spread them across two uh, it's worth risking the squad okay when you consider the point ratio between your the, how much it costs for a seraphim squad and what happens if you manage to take out or severely wound two knights in a single assault phase it's worth it 
So uh, they run up, slap their melta bombs on it. They've got armor bane. That's two plus. That's two dice for penetration. They've got the melta pistols. They're going to be firing as they go in. Uh, it, it, you can you can you can severely damage these guys. And if they can, by the time they keep getting, if they even if they wipe out your entire squad when they get closer, they're still going to be hit by more melta weapons. Um, the other thing to deal with that is that with the escape hatch in the larger point games, I usually keep a retributor squad. I do tend to use retributors more than dominions. And here's the reason why, because the escape hatch doesn't have the repel the enemy special rule. So normally it's more useful for me to pop out of it and shoot than it is for me to have a dominion squad. Now, many times I, I usually carry uh, two, one, one heavy flamer and three multi meltas. You know, if you're going to customize for knights, obviously you would make it four multi meltas. So they can pop out of that with a priestess and their act of faith. And the fact that if you manage to come up to the side or behind them, you normally the knights are going to have their ion shield in the front because they're going to be scared of that uh, twin-linked Icarus LAS cannon more than uh, your escape hatch. So if you're hitting them on the side, or even better yet, the rear, and they only have to be within 12 inches of you for the multi-melta to get the double penetration, I think you can see now, you combine them popping out of an escape hatch and shooting at them at the side and the rear, followed by the Seraphim disembarking, coming down and slapping them with melta bombs. Uh, you can take out knights without, without too much of a problem, even in, even in one round. Uh, one or two knights if you get extremely lucky and they're really clumped together, possibly even three. Who knows? It depends upon the game. I'm just saying don't worry about it. Now the other, uh, no, one other, one other person mentioned uh, that, that wouldn't this work better with Dark Angels? And my answer is no. Yes, Dark Angels is a shooty army for, for Space Marines. Uh, I'll give you that. But let me tell you something. The real people who know no fear are the Sisters of Battle. Okay? Nothing makes them run. You put a, you put a priestess in every squad and that makes them a zealot. That's adamantium will. They, they, they do not run. And that's very important when you're up on the battlements. It is still possible to make Dark Angels run off the battlement. And that's the big thing everybody's scared of, right? Oh, you're going to leave your fortification open and somebody's going to take it. Sisters do not run, period. They especially do not run if they have a priestess in the squad. It is still possible if some Dark Angels are sitting on top or other Space Marines on top or Tau on top, <clears throat> to, to, to pretty much the only people also wouldn't run would be Tyranids to, to make them run. This is that's why this is this is a strategy more geared for sisters than anyone else. So I hope that clarifies what my units are and uh, why I don't use emulators and why I just have a rhino. It's a long video, but like I said, take this, try it, trust me. Do it. Just, you know, don't take my word for it. Go out there and try this and let me know how it works. I hope there will be massive amounts of Sisters players now. Until next time. Bye.